Imagine if you were born with the ability to fly, morph your body, or reheal yourself. That'd be pretty amazing, right? You have natural abilities that no normal human has. In fact, you actually aren't a human. You, my friend, are a mutant. In the X-Men comics and movies, this is seen as a negative thing. If you are a mutant, you are generally hated by pretty much everyone on Earth. You and your kind are freaks. Outsiders. People treat you as if you're a monster. A main theme in the X-Men comics is how being perceived as different makes the lives of mutants dangerous. The conflicts that erupt, especially in the movies, are between two factions. The Brotherhood of Mutants, led by Magneto, who presses for mutant domination over mankind, and the X-Men, led by Charles Xavier, who want to work for peaceful cooperation with humans instead. X-Men is a pretty transparent allegory to the civil rights movement and the ideological difference between Malcolm X and MLK, and how to achieve equality in relation to white America. Their dynamic is what inspired these two characters in the first place, and much of the themes of the original X-Men issues. But, if we're going to take this mutant oppression seriously, it begins to fall apart. When you remove the real-world tie-ins of segregation and the Holocaust, we have a scenario where there is a minority race of genetically diverse and powerful people whose abilities they're oppressed for primarily can be used for fighting back. That's why as a thought experiment, I have a scenario. What if in an alternate timeline, mutants were actually real? If they were just like they are in the comics and movies, I don't mean the entire lore of the Marvel Universe included with that, just beings with incredible power being born randomly into human populations. How does this realistically affect society? Now wait, Cody. Mutants can't possibly be real. How'd we know? Well, Billy. I'm saying Billy because Jimmy's getting old. This is just a thought experiment. For fun. A break from everyday life around us. In this alternate timeline, mutants are real. A mutant can be born to two non-mutant humans. The first thing to realize is that in this new world, there is a prominent minority of people that have extraordinary biological abilities. In the comics and movies, it's explained that people have an irrational hatred of mutants. It's painted as a level of ignorance, misunderstanding mutants. When you look at it from the allegory of the civil rights movement, yeah, it makes sense. But in real life, if mutants did exist, People have every right to be terrified. This oppressed mutant dynamic begins to fall apart when mutants are the ones fighting in all of these stories. Cities being destroyed not by humans, but mutants just fighting each other. Imagine how many people died just from the whim of a mutant fight. 90% of mutants could just be normal people with odd abilities. Most of humanity is afraid of the mutants that can destroy everything just by fighting. A drunken fist fight between guys isn't going to destroy a block. But with mutants, it just might. They don't fight using weapons. They are weapons. This is because it's comics and that's interesting, but it also leads me to ask the question, why are these people oppressed? Homo sapiens are smart, but we gotta admit, we're fleshy, weak, and clawless. Put a human in a cage with a chimp, and the chimp will win, because chimps are stronger. There are very few animals our size we can clobber to death without weapons which is why we have them in the first place. Our knowledge to build knives, guns, bombs, that's our advantage over animals. In this scenario, throughout human history, there are a race of people born naturally stronger than the weapons we craft. They don't need guns. They shoot fire, or ice, or whatever the hell Apocalypse always does. These powerful mutants are a minority, even within the mutant community, but they're a strong one. Which is why in the comics, mutant's scientific name is Homo Superior. Even if 90% of mutants were like Gas Man or just had a weird itch, you still have a population of living weapons. Naturally strong enough to take down entire governments, decide wars, crack down on protests. In a realistic scenario, society doesn't look down on mutants. They worship them, both literally and metaphorically. They're basically gods who can attack whoever. Even in the comics, we have occasional stories of mutants just conquering kingdoms by themselves. Royalty, leaders of nations, the highest class of people got to where they are because of war. In this alternate Earth, those aren't humans. They're the mutants. The comics made the argument that outpopulation meant the mutants had to stay in hiding. But we have real-world historical equivalents that prove the large population can still lose. Look at the British in India or whites in South Africa. It's who has the power, not the population. Mutants have the natural ability to defeat humans, beat them back easily. 
So civilizations throughout history don't rise and fall because of armies, but between which mutant ruler or mutant minions is the strongest. Societies live and fall based off of the power of a few people because there's no way humans can fight mutants alone, especially with just spears. So humans are just stuck in the middle of a constant mutant fight. Look at ancient Egypt, or the Maya, you see rulers who are already regarded as higher than man. It's not shocking to guess mutants would be seen as higher religious figures, or at least superior ones. The strongest and most powerful mutants shape history. Mutants are the highest in every society on Earth, because they simply can beat anyone who opposes them. Humans live their lives as a slave race of weak people who outpopulate, but can't do anything. Now Billy, don't take this as criticizing the X-Men franchise or the writers who crafted it, I understand it's simply a comic and movies. These oppression elements drive the story. This is simply a thought experiment for fun, meant in no way to change how the franchise is. I don't know everything about Marvel's X-Men, so don't kill me for it. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub. So, it's November now. Halloween is over, the dudes are gone, and people are already moving on to Christmas. But we don't have to. Why move on? In fact, why not combine both? Presents that are spooky. Cody, you're a genius. Thanks, Jimmy. It wasn't my idea, though. It's Loot Crate, whose theme last month was horror. Cody, you're a sellout. Stop it, they're gonna find out. Shh. I got the DX version, which is actually a bigger crate, and you get more loot. See what I did there? Here's a comfy sweater with the ghost face from the movie Scream in the painting Scream. Darn, that's clever. A coffee mug based off The Walking Dead and a tiny bloody person inside because nothing wakes you up in the morning like this face and minuscule mutilated people. The chainsaw from Evil Dead. It's not a functioning chainsaw, it's a power bank to charge your phone, but, you know. A statue from The Thing. This pin. Issue of Delirium Magazine and an art print of Evil Dead 2. So many things. My phone actually always dies because I forget to charge it, so this chainsaw might actually be very useful for me. And so will the power bank. The deadline to get all this neat stuff is the 19th by 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also, next month is magic themed for all you Harry Potter people, so sign up soon to not miss out on that. If you want to save some money monthly, then go to lootcrate.com slash althistory and enter althistory to save 10%. What did you say, Cody? Oh, hi, contract obligated Bill. It was... just read the text or click in the link in the description. Nobody likes you, contract obligated Bill. Seriously, this stuff is actually pretty cool. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub.